<laughs> All right. And we are under the big oak, which is a really uh, lovely location. It's a destination place for a lot of people's weddings, by the way. Uh, but this is a, a nice setting uh, to kind of show off part of the house and a lovely tree next to the property. And so what I'm going to do is start, I started with a sketch already in progress last time. And so I thought I would start this time from the very beginning. I have a piece of watercolor paper, which is the size of a postcard. It's been stamped on the back so that you can write a little message. And uh, like last time, I love this idea of creating a souvenir for yourself and to give it to somebody um, or to mail it to somebody when you've gone to visit someplace. It's just a, a little unique kind of gift. And um, so I am going to start again, kind of sketching. Since I have this viewpoint here, I'm sort of uh, sitting on the ground looking up at the at the oak tree here, it's going to kind of have an interesting angle to it. So the feature will, of course, be this large oak tree. Um, but I might start slightly above the, the brick wall, if you can see the little brick wall that's there into the ivy. I'll just start kind of where the ivy begins and make that kind of my my bottom, very bottom uh, border here. So I'm just penciling in very roughly that uh, ivy. It kind of comes up a little bit and then I'm just going to draw the contour of the trunk. So this really major rim coming off to the right. Depending on how small you draw it, you can get more of the more of the limb in there. Just trying to draw enough to that that limb that was uh, cut off. So you see the the bare spot there, which is kind of interesting. been mended and cared for over the years. And then it's kind of tricky, but there is a limb that comes out directly overhead. So we're actually underneath one of the limbs here. And I um, can't really get all of that in. I'll show you what I what I have been able to get. It's a really interesting angle. Of course, behind these major limbs, you have these other limbs that are higher up in the canopy, but they kind of come through, so you'll look and notice these smaller limbs coming down and moving away from you. If you take the time to really sit and notice a lot of the details, like we were talking about the last time with color, just noticing all the variations of color. If you look at the, the texture of the bark of the tree, just sitting and admiring the tree for a little bit, just to notice all of the variation is really interesting. And the Spanish moss that hangs down just everywhere around here. And what Kitty, Kitty's uh, joined us again. She's the program coordinator here at Pebble Hill. And her specialty is ecology, and um, and so I was going to ask, what what is Spanish moss, by the way? Do you know? Mm. Well, it's actually um, an air plant, huh. um, and it it gets the nutrients and things that it needs um, just by hanging on the trees and absorbing it uh, through the air. Um, 
a lot of people have been concerned through the years about it doing harm to the trees that they are in uh -huh. and for the most part they're not they're they're not parasitic um, to the tree but um, the harm that they could do is if it, it gets too much uh, growth on a tree and it competes with the leaves um, so the tree can get its nutrients uh, through the leaves um, on the tree then that could be a little bit of a concern but for the most part they're just a very unique beautiful scenic part of our natural history here in, in South Georgia. It, I mean it's called Spanish moss was it in, was it it's not native or is it native? Gracious you know that's um, a good question we all need to look that one up. Uh, I'm, I don't really recall. Well, I have an art question. Okay. Um, when you mentioned looking at all of the great details in the tree, mm -hmm. so when you're sketching and preparing for your watercolor, right. do you try to draw or sketch all those details now or not necessarily so? So you, you'll, to what level, I guess I'm asking, will you try to sketch the detail? before painting? Uh, with, that's a great question. Really, I when I'm just sketching, it's mostly the the large contour areas, like the, the outline of the tree, uh, maybe some little details, but really um, I wait and just paint those in, because you don't uh, you don't have to have every single detail, and sometimes as you're painting, uh, you may choose to use some details and leave some out because mm -hmm. as you're painting something might work better. It, like for instance, you may notice the words uh, that are going up so that you can add, add lighting here, but I think for the sketch I'm going to leave that out. Even though it's subtle, it, just, it doesn't add anything to the tree. <laughs> so, um, you know, leaving little details like that and sometimes if you get too specific it kind of messes you up later on so right. I just try to uh, block in like you can see what I've done so far with just the outline of the trunk I'm gonna just add in a little bit you know the house is behind us I don't want to get too detailed because really the focus is that tree trunk, um, but there is some nice architecture going on behind it, behind that tree, so it's kind of giving some indications of that. So do you have a favorite? Do you like painting landscapes and nature or structures or people or do you have a preference in what you like to paint? I, I love, uh, for instance, I'm, I'm really drawn to, draw, uh, to painting trees and landscapes. I like um, like structures. I'm not as uh, not as well versed in drawing people. I can I can uh, you know faces maybe or, or a little uh, a gesture painting of somebody in the background, but to do like a full portrait is not uh, not something I'm very well skilled. Tend to avoid that sort of thing. The other things that I'd like to do, which I don't have with me, but I've actually <coughs> made some 
natural ink using walnuts that I found or that were collected for me here on the property. So I nice. collected the walnuts, made uh, walnut ink from it, and then painted a picture of the, the main house here and, uh, and some other places around. So I really like taking natural materials and making paint pigment out of them. So what is that process? How, how do you make the pigment or the paint? Well, it depends on the, so for like walnuts, you're taking the, the husk of the walnut shell and uh, boiling it and all of the tannins that are inside the, that spongy part before you get down to the real, the hard um, casing. Mm -hmm. And that creates the, uh, you're adding with vinegar and boiling it down and uh, creating a, a really dark brown ink. Uh oh. Okay, I think we're back. Okay. Sorry about that. We had a bad connection. Uh oh. So you oh, were here. describing the um, process of making walnut ink. Walnut ink. So yeah. So I'm I'm just taking uh, boiling down the, the walnut husks. Oh, salt and vinegar. Okay, gotcha. Okay, I think we're back. All right. Sorry about the poor connection. If you're online, do we, do we have visitors? Um, it's showing. I think that we have three, maybe. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. No questions yet. That's okay. I'll just keep painting. We're having a good conversation. Yes. Okay. So, I had a question I thought about yeah, earlier. Okay. Um, how often do you need to change your water? Like, oh, is, is it, you know, from my point of view, after you're doing a couple of dips here and there, your water is starting to change color. So, I'm thinking, oh, gracious, that might your color on your paper. So, it definitely does. And I like I uh, changed it in between these two paintings that I've done um, and basically a good rule of thumb is if if it's uh, so cloudy that you can't see through it that uh, it's it's time to change the water okay look Okay, sorry about that. We're back. back We're having again. some blips and uh, reception here. The thing about being out in the wild, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Sometimes a good rule of thumb. Okay, we're back. All right. Sorry for all of the technical difficulties, but uh, we're... So I haven't...